drawing airplanes with Prismacolor pencils, an inside look at how it's done. Hello everyone, welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today we're gonna to look at the interesting technique of drawing airplanes using Prismacolor colored pencils. This story begins in the turn of the century two-story uh, two-family home in Rockville Center, Long Island. The year was 1954, and us baby boomers had Saturday morning TV shows. Uh, one of my favorites was this gentleman right here. His name was John Nagy. He was an artist, and he introduced uh, an early version of interactive television uh, to us kids with a drawing show on Saturdays. You would send away for this kit. It would have drawing paper and pencils and charcoal and all sorts of uh, <coughs> accoutrement to uh, draw and you would follow him on the TV screen drawing the uh, riverboat, the log cabin or the bulldog and uh, away you would go. It was uh, inspirational for me but I was already writing my first book. Uh, this is all about airplanes. They're built, well we didn't have spell check in those days. But uh, this is where I was headed. I wanted to be an aviation artist. And in the mid 50s, let's take a look at some of the airplanes that were in the air at that time. This is an airliner, Douglas DC-7, a research X-plane, the Bell X-2, and an Air Force fighter, Steve Canyon's favorite, the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger. Well, these were my versions. This is an Eastern DC-7 making a max performance takeoff. <clears throat> the Bell X-2 on the lake bed at Edwards in the blinding sun. And you notice that the lines are pretty straight. And this is where I had discovered, even uh, with this F-102 uh, making a AB max performance takeoff at Palmdale, uh, I discovered the trick of uh, dragging a pencil along the top of a ruler and you can make a straight line. But the introduction of color represented some, uh, some unusual problems. Uh, a drawing in crayon, I had the precision of the line drawing, but the color wasn't uh, as controlled. Uh, and uh, so I tried drafting colored pencils and these were used mainly on vellum. Uh, when you used them on paper, the uh, leads were very hard and they kind of ripped the paper and you can see the color isn't very rich. The breakthrough, and that's a word I'm gonna use uh, a number of times in this presentation, the breakthrough was Prismacolor. At that time they were called Eagle Prismacolor and this is the difference. Radiant, vibrant color, uh, the leads were soft enough to render, but hard enough to uh, have controlled lines like you see here. I had my French curves and uh, straight edges going, and uh, I was now able to draw and represent the airplanes I wanted in a much more, with much more fidelity. This is a, uh, what the pencils look like. This is a, a selection of pencils. They began in my day as Eagle Prismacolor from England. Uh, then they were uh, changed to the Berol Company became Barrel Prismacolor, and today they're Sanford Prismacolor, and they're made in Mexico. These are the French curves I was referring to, and this gave uh, an artist the ability to have controlled curved lines. So now uh, you look at this F-105, and you can see the, the nose contours and uh, just all the compound curves that are uh, made with the uh, French curves, and it's a much more uh, controlled way of presenting the airplane. I was building models, of course, and so uh, this, these images were inspirational. If I saw an American 707 in the model, I'd wanna do a picture of it taking off from uh, Idlewild Airport. Looks like it's in full afterburner. Or I'd see ads in Life Magazine, uh, things like this beautiful Delta uh, Convair 880, and I'd wanna be drawing that uh, also taking off in full afterburner. But you can see that I was using the tools and the pencils uh, with uh, thick black lines to uh, represent the airplanes that uh, I was so excited about. And here we have uh, <clears throat> a Ferry Delta, a research airplane from Great Britain, the first airplane to fly a thousand miles per hour. Uh, but in terms of our technique, I mean, there was always a lot of air traffic and the planes always looked like they were on fire because I always had them in full burner, whether they had afterburners or not, didn't matter. Jets made flames coming out the back, just like on those model box stops. <clears throat> Uh, as the, uh, I should mention here, I'm at about uh, 13 years old. I started drawing in Prisma when I was about uh, 11. And so uh, we're a couple of years into developing the technique. But if it flew, I drew, I drew it. This is the uh, 
saber liner from North American prototype. And here was a version of a Boeing 707 swing tail freighter. Uh, and now I'm introducing ground equipment and perspective and all sorts of other elements. But uh, you can see the, the technique is improving as I drew it. I should mention that in between each one of the drawings that you're seeing on this uh, screen now were dozens, if not many, many dozens of photos. I'd say several hundred uh, overall in a period of uh, maybe six or seven years. The biggest thing for me was uh, <clears throat> getting in the Studebaker and going to the airport with my dad. And we'd be on the observation decks of all these different terminals at Idlewild. Now we're talking uh, uh, late 50s, early 60s. Uh, and the reason I mention this is because you look at the uh, Pan Am 707 that we see here and uh, just the shape, the color, the lettering, uh, presented so many uh, just tremendous opportunities to advance in the rendering of the airplane. And if you look at the tail in particular, you see what they call the, the meatball, the circular logo uh, of the Pan Am uh, logo on the tail of the 707. And I wanted to do that even more uh, controlled. And to do that, you, you needed ellipse guides and circle guides that you see here. Uh, that circle guide is my very first one that I bought in Rockville Center when I was about 13. Still using it to this day. So here's a Pan Am 707 in Prismacolor. I have my uh, tail logo rendered. Uh, the lettering is getting a little tighter. And you notice that those black lines that you saw earlier are now giving way to a color in the background actually defining the outline of the, of the machine. So the next breakthrough was uh, rendering that way. And I was inspired by this particular rendering in a Bob McCall, uh, page from a General Electric calendar. McCall was one of the great illustrators in that era. I went on to become an artist in residence with NASA during the Apollo moon program, but a brilliant talent. And he was an Air Force artist, great inspiration for me. He had a very loose, splashy uh, technique, and yet it was all technically correct. Everything was just there uh, that you needed to see. This was a representation of all the uh, airplanes and helicopters powered by General Electric engines. So this is an 880 morphed into a 990 because you can see a semblance of speed pods in the 990 color scheme uh, taking off at uh, what was now JFK Airport. Um, I was so fascinated with this. The first time I'd ever seen an artist showing an, a jet airliner with the landing gear retracting and the flaps extended. And uh, oh, look at those engines taking off an afterburner, even though it never had it. The flames were uh, a stylized representation of the power of the jet age and everybody used it. So my version in 1961 uh, of that, I was now 14. And so those black lines have given way to much lighter outlines. But this uh, image I wanted to show you represents the, the, the major breakthrough in my Prisma technique of going from uh, lightly indicated color sky and shape to using the solid color in the background without any outline at all to define the edges of the airplane. Now we were on to some. And you can see the application of straight edges, French curves, uh, ellipse guides, and circle guides to uh, create the airplane. So now I had a whole new look. The nice uh, creamy uh, tex texture of the sky in the background, uh, the very soft lighting on the airplane. This is the Saunders Row SR-53. Uh, jet rocket interceptor the, during the Cold War. And even the background down below is taking on a different look. Uh, one of the other machines at uh, the airport that I was uh, just, just, I just fell in love with is the uh, Boeing Vertol 107 flown by New York Airways, 25 passenger jet helicopter that uh, uh, connected all the airports in New York. And uh, you may have heard me in other presentations mention the story of how I traded this drawing to New York Airways for flight time in the helicopter. And this became the basis for uh, just about every documentary art program that I became involved with. That was the uh, US Air Force, NASA, Navy, uh, US Coast Guard and LA County Sheriff all had documentary art programs where artists were flown in those airplanes in exchange for artwork. Uh, this is a Navy exchange project uh, with the uh, VF-11 Red Rippers in Oceana, Virginia, flying the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. Jack Lenwood, God bless him, the fantastic Ravel uh, cover artist, 625 different covers for Ravel, some for Aurora also. 
uh, he was the godfather of box art. There was no one like him. And uh, I was so inspired. I've mentioned before that he was my first art teacher uh, 20 years before I ever met him. <laughs> and uh, I learned so much from just observing what he did. How did he render metal, uh, clouds, skies, lighting on the ground? And so uh, I took his uh, Ravel Caravel SAS uh, kit and uh, changed it into a United Caravel. United was using these airplanes uh, all over the Northeast in the uh, early 60s. Uh, they're a beautiful machine. Engines were rear mounted, nice clean wing, uh, very different look than the 707 or the DC-8. And so I did this rendering of uh, the United Caravel uh, inspired from Jack. And you can see now the, the pencils have taken on a new look. Uh, there's a nice uh, creamy aspect to the color and uh, the rendering is starting to uh, become a little more believable, a little more realistic. Uh, by the time I was a senior in high school, 1965, I developed the Prismacolor into a, a pretty good uh, way of rendering aircraft. And now I'm using uh, a, a 2H uh, graphite pencil to uh, lock in the outlines and put in the skin seams and some of the more subtle detail that you can't achieve with the, the colored pencil. But uh, uh, now this was, had taken me to a place where uh, I could begin to learn painting in uh, college and art school, which came years later, but apply all the uh, knowledge of how to render uh, light and shadow form and structure uh, that I learned using the Prismacolor. Uh, in 1967, at the height of the Vietnam War, I joined the United States Air Force, enlisted uh, in April of that year. <clears throat> this was the, uh, the turning point of my life, quite frankly. I uh, spent four years in the Air Force, uh, traveled around the world, flew in a lot of different uh, types of aircraft. And uh, when I uh, separated from the service, um, <clears throat> I came to California with a bunch of service buddies and uh, went back to art school. So this is one of the more radical <laughs> changes in my life. But uh, I'm seen here with a uh, high-performance sailplane, and I fell in love with soaring. I'd been flying for uh, about four or five years at that point. I had, uh, was working on my private license and uh, single-engine power. And then I uh, came to California and fell in love with soaring and got involved in that in a big way. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because I was using Prismacolor to render and get back involved in uh, the art world using uh, sailplanes as the subject. So this is a on the spot sketch of a Blahnik uh, L-13 sailplane. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, you know, you have the California mountains now, different, uh, different locale than the back east uh, renderings. And then we're back to the fully developed uh, Prismacolor look, uh, showing the Blahnik uh, doing aerobatics at sunset. I hired into Douglas in 1977 and became a staff illustrator a few years later. And this is probably the pinnacle of the Prismacolor technique uh, where I was very inspired to uh, be working on Douglas products and I had access to all the reference material in the world. So <clears throat> to have that kind of uh, detail uh, for the Eastern DCA jetliner was a dream come true and it uh, really propelled the Prismacolor technique into a new realm. I was using Prismacolor for commercial work as well. I did this rendering for uh, a magazine cover of the American Aviation Historical Society uh, journal in 1980. And you can see how the Prismacolor reproduced quite well under the camera. Today, I'm still using Prisma uh, for comps and sketches and concept sketches. I do a lot of work with museums now, and so uh, I'm able to sketch out ideas for exhibits and displays using my trusty Prismacolor pencils. And I'm gonna close with this one. I did this. Uh, and while I was a, a student at Pratt Institute, uh, I submitted this for an extra credit project in a two-dimensional design class and promptly got kicked out of the class for doing stuff that wasn't uh, in the syllabus. But I was going to be an aviation artist, darn it, and I was going to show them how things were done. And I used this Prismacolor of a uh, Vickers Super VC-10, which was flying into New York at that time. Uh, we're talking, again, 1965-66 time frame. Uh, there's just one little thing wrong. Well, there are several things wrong with this rendering. Uh, it's the taxiways from hell. There's so much going on. There's uh, collisions of the airplane and the ground. Uh, but there was a TV show on about this time with Fred McMurray called My Three Sons. And all three of them are in this rendering. Uh, the sun is back here, backlighting the uh, top of the airplane. And then you have the sun in front of the airplane casting the shadow on the ground. And, uh, oh, yeah, how about a sun uh, angle over here on the right 
uh, casting a different light and shadow on the radome of the control tower at Heathrow Airport. Good trick. But there's one way to save this. There's only one thing you can do. You make it into a model box top. Good trick. Well, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. As always, I'd like to say special thanks first to my mom for saving all my old drawings so I could scan them and present them to you here in this, uh, in this program. And to uh, Mr. Morgan uh, at Morgan's Art and Drafting Supply who always uh, was so kind and generous and uh, sold me Duredco drawing tablets and Prismacolor pencils and all the drawing and drafting equipment I ever needed uh, to become a professional artist. It's those early developments and early people in your life that can really, really make a difference. Until next time, take care.